Okay. All right. Good evening, everybody. This is the Conservation Commission's uh, meeting for Wednesday, August 21st, 2024. And we're calling our meeting to order at 7.03. We have with us Patty Phillips, Carol Jordan, Marilyn Schreiber, and myself, Kathy Demers. Um, approval of minutes from July 17th. Do I hear a motion to approve? So move. Carol, any second? I'll second. Second. Discussion? No corrections. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstained? So moved. Okay, thank you. It doesn't look like anybody's here to speak tonight. Uh, Carol, do you have a report for us on finances? Uh, absolutely nothing has changed. I, I'm turning in the bills for Kakawick and CLCC tomorrow morning. Wait, so they'll, they, they won't show up until, until um, uh, I don't know, that, I don't know, probably won't, won't be paid until August. So, but there, so there's nothing expended on the budget and no change in ARPA money. Okay, so we're starting off with a nice clean budget of $1,500 still. I believe so. Great. Actually, my report didn't say what our, it showed, so it showed we'd spent nothing, but it didn't actually show on the report what our budget was, which is kind of interesting. Um, no. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but I, I I believe it's 1500 I will double check, but I can't imagine that they 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 were desperate enough to not um, reduce our request. So hope not. Hi, Laura. I see that you're on. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yep. We can hear you. Can you hear us? I can hear you sort of. Um, I left my laptop at work, so I got my phone. So I'm trying to Dave, figure out how to get please? things going on here. Just sure. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Yes. Would you please switch to a different phone? Thank you. Yeah. You can put it back in the other phone, okay? Okay. <laughs> So I'm persuading my husband to, to, to just hang up the house phone and go take his phone in the other room. <laughs> uh, great. Okay. Just want to look here for, <clears throat> so our ARPA fund balance, again, I like to have this in our minutes each time. So it's can... the same as last month. I don't think we need to put it in, uh, uh, report it every month. Uh, because it's unless there, there's been a change and there has been nothing unless you've submitted bills we've submitted any bills that I'm not aware of no no I just I just like to have it recorded on each minute because we keeps it keeps us on track I know it's two thousand eight hundred forty one and ninety six cents is what was reported in <laughs> yeah that's what's oh. my yeah okay. class great so. um so under old business what I'd yeah. like like to do actually before I go further, let me just um, mention for the minutes that uh, Laura Rodriguez has joined us as of seven o six. Um, under old business, I'd like to suggest that we move up item number seven to, to discuss this first while we have a quorum because uh, we may have some members yeah. that have to leave early. Item seven is on the open space opportunities and the Burma Road property in particular. Do I hear a second? I, I, when you say seven. Oh. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. I meant F. 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 <laughs> yes. So yeah. Sorry. Okay. I was, yeah. <laughs> Just so. So it's uh, move F open space opportunities is what we're looking at. Okay. Yes. To move that up to the beginning of uh, under yeah. old business. Fine. I, we need a motion to do that. I'll so move. Okay. Any discussion on that? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. So move. Thank you. All right. So just some updates. Um, as you probably recall from last meeting, we were discussing the different options that the town would have in terms of removing the camp. We had hoped that we would be able to go through Lustig Road more easily, be able to get a dumpster and put down a little bit of gravel um, and take the camp out that way, which would have cost the town approximately $4,650, according to Troy. 
um, the gravel would have been 650 and the dumpster 4,000 to rent the dumpster for a week. <clears throat> but we seem to be still having some issues with getting everybody to agree that we can use Lustig Road. And <clears throat> as far as the town of Ashford is concerned at this point, they basically had discontinued the road. So it really is in the hands of the boundary landowners. <clears throat> So we discussed last time what we could do if we needed to go through Burma Road, which the town um, Benton Ruby property is on. And we talked about, <clears throat> uh, we got a quote from a logging operation that could use a forwarder and it would cost $1,500 to rent that for the day. Um, and then the dumpster, we'd still need to rent for 4,000. So the cost for that option would be $5,500. And the last one um, that Troy came up with, he was able to get a quote for the town renting a tracked vehicle that has a dump body on it, and that would be $3,500 for the week. Uh, he also said he probably, if we finish the project of removing the camp, he could use it for some other small projects around town. And we'd still need to get a dumpster uh, rental as well. So the cost for that option would be $7,500. So the reason that we were trying to get all these numbers was so that we could identify what the overall cost for going forward with this purchase would be. So we could decide on what type of potential purchase price we could offer for the property. The appraisal itself, which was done in August of 2023, uh, last almost a year ago or a little more than a year ago, came in at $35,000 um, was what the market value of the property was um, for that appraisal. But that was considering that we had access through Lustig Road at the time. And that was, that, what was the cost of the appraisals, Kathy, I forgot? Uh, the, the appraisal cost the town $1,700 and that was, an, that was using open space funds. That was a great right. town yeah. meeting. That's right, yeah. Yeah. So, the other thing we have to consider would be what would be the legal fees um, for purchasing the property. Uh, just rough estimates based on costs from other legal work that we've had done on open space purchases. A title search might cost, you know, two thousand dollars depending on how involved it becomes. Um, a purchase and sales agreement, I believe, the last time we had it done was about eighteen hundred dollars to have the attorneys write it up between the two parties and you know make sure everything was done correctly so it could it could also there could also be some additional costs for title insurance um closing uh legal fees for the closing so i've had i have a rough estimate of about six thousand dollars in potential legal fees that it could cost out of the open space fund to do this purchase so if you start to add everything up, the worst case scenario for removing the camp is $7,500. Legal fees, $6,000. So you've got um, $13,500 there. And the appraisal was for $35,000, um, but we weren't anticipating uh, having to have more legal work probably done to see if we can finally get through Lustig Road and also the cost of removing the camp. That was not considered during the appraisal. So what I'd like to talk about tonight is to get everyone's opinion on what type of potential right price we should consider yeah. offering. So that the camp, the camp. So uh, can I review? We so it, yep. we've we've already paid 1700 for the appraisal. We have 6000 for legal fees estimated 7500 max for removing the camp. Mm -hmm. um, and 35 for um, for the purchase price. That's what the market value the market value. value but this is this is this is market value but but we may not we may be at, hoping to get it at less than market price. Right, considering we have to remove the camp. I mean, the appraisal didn't take that into consideration. Like 
you right. know, we're, we're just interested in the land. We don't want the camp and we're going to have to put up some money to actually remove it. So it becomes, it's not a safety factor for the town or a liability issue. Right. And, and that, and that also we're, we're talking about uh, possibly um, whether does the, does the uh, camp removal, Kathy also include uh, doing the work that needs to be done on the dams in terms of removing trees Yes, I mean, when, when they're up there with the excavator, that's what they would do as part of that. So, yes. So that would be, that's combination, the 7,500 would be a combination of camp removal and um, dam uh, repairs or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, that whatever, what, Maintenance. To reduce the risk of failure of the dam by getting rid of the trees that are growing on it. Right, yeah. Don't those trees actually help keep the, uh, uh, the, the dam in place instead of removing them? Wouldn't that make it easier for the water to be breached just by mother nature and the sheer volume of water that's in there? Um, according to, you know, the engineer, Carl, who had done the um, engineering study on the dam, yeah. he said that the problem with the large trees is that if they're thrown over by the wind, their, yeah. roots, will, their roots will fall over and they'll yeah. pull the dam apart. Because okay. the dam's fairly narrow, and so he he always recommends that the trees be removed from dam. From okay. The yeah. He 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 certainly I trust his opinion. He's he's been doing this for years, and um, I was just curious. Mm, yeah. Well, that was my thought too. Originally, it was like, well, you know, doesn't that slow some of the water down, so to speak, um, from entering the pond? But actually, it's more of a risk uh, for breaching the pond. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Good question. So, you know, we're going to have to do is um, here's what a, my thought process is. Um, I'd like to come up with an, a rough number and then pitch it to Mrs. Pedix, um, explain all the factors we took into consideration. And then if she is in agreement with a purchase price, then we can move forward to bring it to the Board of Finance um, and then the Board of Selectmen, of course, to the town for the total package, what it would cost, the cost for the land, the cost for the, the camp removal, um, the cost for the legal fees. And we'd package that and then go to town meeting and request the use of open funds for that. I guess one of my questions, and Carol, maybe you would know this, is can we use open space funds to be to remove the camp. We can use it for legal fees. Can we use uh, if it? it's a cause if it's basically if it's a cost of acquiring the property and a cost to us because uh, we don't want the property with the camp on it. And um so if you do if you add all of that up, the appraisal legal fee estimated legal fees, removal of the the camp of the camp, uh that comes to 15 too. So if the the uh appraisal for the, for the purchase price, um, if you subtract that from the, the appraised value of the property, and, and we need to have all of the take care of all of those costs, then you're looking at more like 20,000. Mm -hmm. We normally when we when we buy a property, though, we do, we don't necessarily deduct the cost of the legal fees because that's kind of one thing that yeah. Well, yeah if we don't if you take out the but it's still say say nine drop it off like nine or ten thousand something like that because yeah. we're at where they you're right the legal fees we'd have to do anyway um and uh the appraisal is not legally <coughs> required because we we're not going to apply for a grant for this but it's still uh, there still would be a cost to us. So, um, but the removal of the of the camp, um, uh, that definitely is something as a cost that would not normally be incurred as part of the deal. Right. So we're looking at at reducing the price by um, the purchase price by the estimated cost. I would think of of the uh, expense of removing the camp. That's what I was thinking. And protecting the the dam, so that would take us down from from thirty five hundred to twenty eight five. My my, let me do my I can my calculator here. Twenty seven five. So seventy five thousand. Excuse me, seventy five. Twenty seven. 
No, wait, wait, what about, wait, am I, am I doing this right? Okay. 35,000? 35 minus 7, 70, 100 is 27.5. Right. Coming up with. Yeah. So that would be the maximum. If So what you're saying, Carol, that should be the maximum of what we could offer Mrs. Pedix, or we would recommend offering Mrs. Pedix. Yeah. I think, I think that's because that's not a, um, the, we can't, don't we really want to accept the property with the camp on it. And so that's, and that's, I think, believe something that she's understood um, all along that, that um, that's a, that's a liability for us to have the camp and, um, and the repairs and uh, making the dam uh, less likely to breach uh, is another cost that we 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 wouldn't normally occur as incur as part of a transaction just to buy land. So anybody else have some thoughts, want to weigh in on this? <clears throat> Any questions that anybody might have? So the intent of owning this is to uh make it attached to the to the park up that way right um do you do we feel as though the public will want to uh go that far to see to add on to the, a hike because it is if if we're not sure that the public is going to um enjoy this parcel that's a lot of money to spend uh without knowing what the uh foot traffic will be there well i think part of it is also for wildlife habitat protection and also right. it's to protect um any de future development it, although it might be very challenging for somebody in the future to, to develop it um if they developed that parcel it would be kind of an irritation i think um for the park because of the the road coming in right um, if loose dig got opened up in particular, if that person did have a right of way, um, we could see a lot of, you know, vehicle traffic in that area. Um, right. So you're thinking, Kathy, if somebody who has right of way over the road, one of the existing landowners, neighboring landowners who owns the, the right of way, part of the right of way might just choose to do something with it. It's possible, or the if whoever owns the Pedix property now or in the future could do legal battle to get access to using Lustig as a right of way, and then if they get if they legally are able to do that, um, which you know we don't know as from a town standpoint if we're going to be able to do that or not, but somebody in the future could try to do that, and if they did did have legal grounds to it and they left that open as a you know right of way we could have vehicle traffic you know up in that part of fenton ruby and i think that's another reason we wanted to secure it because if we did secure it it would be there would be no question about it we'd never have to worry about burma road either you know somebody challenging the use of burma road to access it because the town of willington did not has not legally discontinued that portion of Burma Road. Hmm. They only discontinued the piece, the piece above um where the, that steep area um above the <coughs> where the after the road to the Topilkas goes off. That yeah. Area, that's I mean it hasn't been maintained for many, many years, mm -hmm. but we haven't legally discontinued it. There's different ways of abandoning, if you will, a road. Um, yeah. If you have, it's the best way to do it is to legally discontinue it at a town meeting. But you can also, some towns just choose not to maintain it without doing that more in a legal way, but then, then it's easier to challenge it. Yeah. So. And we're absolutely sure that the, not that that was never discontinued. Well, as far as Mark, um, our town historian has looked into it. Yeah. Um, and we can't find anything. Yeah. So I know there was a study done a long time ago uh, on all the roads 
or whatever. I don't even know what happened to that. That was way back when, probably in the late 70s, early 80s. But I mean, as far as it being I mean, also a, a benefit. My to office was across the hall, so probably in the 80s sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that was after I got thrown out of the ta tax collector's office. So. <laughs> but I mean, I think it'd be a benefit. Um, Marilyn, your question about would people use it? People yeah. do up Burma Road. Um, they walk all the way over That's right. Lustig, you know, to the beginning of Lustig and come back in through um, the Ruby Ro Ruby Trail sometimes. I mean, I, I see footpaths, people make little paths from the Ruby Trail up to Burma Road. So. Yeah. Does Mrs. That, does Mrs. Is, is the woman's name Pedix also? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is she aware of, of the uh, the value of that property? No, we didn't share the, the appraisal with her last year. Um, right. You know, we certainly can if, if she asks. Um, yes. We can just say, you know, based, we can just say generally based on what the appraisal showed and what we know our costs will be to remove the camp. Yeah. Um, this is what we can offer you and um, see if she's willing to agree to that. And then if she is, then we could move forward to set up a legal purchase and sales agreement. And, um, and if she said no, what would we do? Would we just walk away from it? We, I'm just that, you know, I'm just trying to. I'm yeah. trying to look at the full picture. Yeah. So if she decides that the the amount that we we just discovered, and she says no, that's not uh, that doesn't make it for me. Mm -hmm. Would that means that she would we would uh, <coughs> what happened or you don't go there yet? No use to talk about it because it hasn't happened yet. Um, she could counter. She could say, well, you know, I I don't accept that, but I'd be willing to do this. And then right. bring that back to this commission right. and discuss it, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious how that goes. Yeah. I mean, I think she fully, under, I've, I've been keeping in touch with her um, every few months to update her what's going on and what we've been looking at and the, you know, some of the roadblocks we've run into. So she's quite aware and she's actually said in her notes, she's very grateful that we're pursuing this because she lives out of state. She's not in a good position to be trying to figure this out herself. Um, right. You know, and she would like to see it added to the park. I don't believe that she's trying to make a real profit on this. Um, she'll actually take a loss because yeah. she and her husband paid almost $50,000 for it back in the 90s. Um, yeah. But, I mean, that's going to be her decision. That's right. And and you talked about the bench or a plaque and a monument or some display of yeah, her, that her be, husband. Yeah, that was definitely her desire. She said, you know, if she decided to sell it, um, that was one of the stipulations she would like to see. And, you know, it could be up to the commission if we want to put a bench or some kind of signage, but she would like something to acknowledge her husband. And obviously, I'm sure we'd want her to be involved in uh, coming up with some of the words, you know, that would be on right. Yeah. Yeah. But it would, that we would make sure that the deed st specified that this became part of the park. So, because we want, um, the, in the same way that um, the Drobny Sanctuary is legally a part of Fenton Ruby Park, it's not a separate property, um, even though we, you know, we, we recognize the gift uh, mm -hmm. By naming that portion of the park, um, but it's all it's all one one th piece, and that would be writ uh, presumably written into the deed in the same way um, that it that it is a, with a Drobny uh, sanctuary deed. Hmm, good point. We certainly can get a copy of that deed, and you know, um, we've got sure. a copy of it. <laughs> okay, I'm sure, we have a copy of it in the file. In the file. <laughs> But we could look at it and just see, make sure that the attorney, when they're writing up the um, the deed, if if this all goes through, yeah, good suggestion, Carol. And Miss, and then that Mrs. Pettix would understand that that it's not a separate park in itself; it's part of Fenton Ruby. Yeah, it's part of Fenton Ruby, but we would acknowledge it, uh, um, the gift as the as the Pettix tract in honor of, you know, her husband, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Good wording. I always can rely on you for good wording, Carol. <laughs> Any other comments or 
how do people feel about um, me just having a very informal conversation with her and, um, you know, Carol's suggestion of going with, you know, the 35,000 minus the 7,500, that would be the worst case scenario for removing the camp. So we'd come up, you know, with a figure of 27, five. I'm totally I comfortable with you having conversations with her. I think it's, I think it's a, a valuable for this woman to know what's going on because it means a lot to her. Right, and also if she's kept involved, um, you'll be able to get a true sense of whether she wants to continue after you tell her the cost that we're going to have to, right, shell out to create the property ready. And wouldn't she, I mean, it sounds like you've been having so much great dialogue with her that she would say, yes, that's fine. I mean, she wouldn't let us go ahead with spending all that money and then say, no, I mean, are you going to give her a sense of how much we're going to need to spend or not? Yeah, and oh. you could, and you could, I mean, you certainly can mention that we will be incurring other costs for yes. the fees and, yeah. and, um, and we've incurred the cost of the appraisal and, and as well. And um, I think real in just being realistic, her options are not many. Um, right. Because whoever um, would, who's going to want to uh, acquire a property when they don't have guarantee, they're going to have to have a big hassle over whether they could access the property. Um, if they wanted to build on it, would they be able to get the power company to, to, to run a line in again, because they took that line out years ago. So um, there are, it's a difficult piece of property to market. Um, and I doubt that she would be able to find somebody who would, would want to, uh, I'm just, just being, trying to be realistic when they're, if somebody's looking to buy a nice piece of property and you know they can find plenty of other op uh, open space parcels around that would be less complicated and would have better access and not have the issues that are associated with this property so it's not like she has a lot of options i don't think so mm -hmm. that puts us in i think in a better a little bit easier bargaining situation mm -hmm. Any other comments, suggestions? I think you've done it, Kathy. The conversations yeah. you've been having with her, it sounds like you and her being pretty candid with each other and you'll have a sense from her what direction she's going in today mm -hmm. or, or in a month from now. I don't, I don't know. I'm not too worried of it not happening. <laughs> Is anyone else? Oh, no, I think, I, and of course she she understands or be made to understand that this is all yeah. contingent upon the obtaining uh, the consent of the the um of, of the town of Willington to purchase the property, and right. Uh, so that's they, they, it's all hinges on approval of funding as well. Kathy, do we have enough oh. photographs of that place to uh to add to the discussion when it has to go to town meeting? Or is it better to not go, go that route? Oh, I, I think, you know, we could um, certainly get some photographs of it to put up. I mean, I have some photographs, but most of them that I've taken are mostly of the camp property and the date right. and such. But um, we certainly could take some pictures, you know, that would be presented at town meeting. Yeah, I, mean, I can I, remember when we were acquiring the Fenton Ruby property. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, go, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Pat. Uh, and I and I know we created like a fact sheet mm -hmm. and it was like 10 bullet items that draw drew people's attention. We used it at meetings. We posted it places. Mm -hmm. Very simple fact sheet about how important this property is and how we don't get many offers of a budding property. Yeah. I mean, there's there's just I mean, I think we could all think of a couple of bullet points on that fact sheet tonight yeah. you know what I mean and and that could be something that the public at some point would see we just need to get it out there once it becomes so I agree with you Marilyn do people really want it but that that's our job that's our job <laughs> yeah. is to is yeah. to give them the, right. the full, full uh, yes. uh, yep. knowledge that we have and, and not and not keep it we don't want to keep anything from the public because you know there's people out there that have different views on things and 
Uh, the more yep. open and opaque you are, I think uh, the better it is. I agree. Yeah, um, I was going to say that there's photos in the appraisal. Would those be all right to use? Because yeah. those are very good of the whole property. Um, the other thing I was wondering, I just the when you all were talking, um, I, I think every I, I I'm a, in agreement with all of you on the plan, um, but in the process, she would agree informally to. Um, a price or would it be more of a formal agreement and then it goes to town meeting and all of that would be resolved before we'd actually spend the money to remove the camp right i mean we would actually own the property right before spending the money correct right, right. so it's not like we would invest money removing the camp and then she says no right so it's mm -hmm. the investment would be in the legal fees through that process of purchasing it right in the past um, if I remember this correctly, the steps that we've taken is, you know, we've negotiated a price. We've gone to the board of finance to be able to get um, purchase, you know, to pay for a purchase and sales agreement. And then the purchase and sales agreement is, is contingent upon the town approving the, the expenditure. Um, but if she's informally agreeing to this, we could take the whole package to the town and uh, then put the purchase and sales agreement together. Um, you know, that's another way we could do it. If she's agreeable to a price, we could take the whole package, say to the town, this is the purchase price for the land. This is what we believe it's going to cost to remove the camp. This is what we think the legal fees will be. And then we, we ask the town to approve an expenditure up to, say, a for example, like $40,000 from the open space fund to pay for all of those things. So that's that's one way to do it. That, that So that sounds to me like that would be the better way. Cause like another way, would we need to go to town meeting twice? We would. Yeah, we so yeah. going to town meeting once I think is always better than twice because if they say yes <laughs> to the first town meeting and then they say no on the second town meeting, which which has happened with, with funding things, you know, then where are you? Mm -hmm. right. And the other thing is, in addition to photographs, a uh, map is very important because that was very key when we, when we acquired the second Talmadge property was to show how, how it related to the existing open space around it. And, um, you know, that, that visual, um, I think, was probably just as important as, as photographs in convincing people it's an important acquisition because of its... A, because of its location and the way it abuts the park. So they can actually see, mm -hmm. visualize what what they're getting, where it is, where yeah. it is and all of that. So right. what about Kathy? Can people walk down that road? Or <laughs> can they walk which which road? Uh, love for coming up, can they approach from Lustig? Uh technically uh, and there's, not come there's up. No there's no signage the 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 people that are living on the bounds of it right now i mean it, it was kind of news to them that they were kind of in control of that this year i mean they <laughs> didn't know that the town had discontinued it formally and that it technically kind of reverted back to them to people that that had that right of way so they they haven't chosen to put up any signs and there are people that do walk through there um and they I've walk through there yeah, they seem to I'm be okay with it right now, as long as there's not, you know, ATVs or vehicles trying to come down. And that's why they wanted the trees to stay there, because it was keeping people from going down with vehicles. Absolutely. The, the trees that are across, they were put, to, they were, were, are across there for a reason, because they don't want people, uh, vehicles, and we don't want vehicular traffic through there either, or bikes or ATVs or any of that stuff. So right. um, that would suit us just fine, but I, I just um, might be be worth just asking because for a pedestrian, as long as the as the owner on one side of the road, there as I understand it, the, there are people owners on both sides of the road. As long as one of those owners was willing to have a foot have people use that as a footpath, 
um, then I don't think we'd have any problems because uh, you don't you don't need the full width. It doesn't involve noise and uh, distractions and as much likelihood of people leaving trash around or any of that kind of thing. Right. So we might be able to work that. Possibly. Sorry. I mean, we do have access in the sense that once we secure that property, um, even now, we can just make a little side trail from the Ruby Trail, too, that people can come down, get on the Ruby Trail, you know, a more formal trail, because there are people doing that now. Um, and then they can, from the Ruby, they can go anywhere. Yeah. So. Yep. All right. So if, <clears throat> if you're comfortable with that, um, do we need to have a formal motion that uh, Conservation Commission... Um, to informally discuss uh, purchase price with uh, the landowner. Yeah, I move to authorize Kathy to under negotiations with Laura Pettix um, uh, for possible purchase of uh, her property on um, that adjoins Fenton Ruby Park off of Ruby Road. A second. Yeah. Who's that, Patty? Thank Laura. You. Laura. Laura. Okay, thank you. Okay, let me just write this down so I have it. And I agree too. Okay. <laughs> Any more discussion? Again, what I'm gonna, what I plan to do okay. is I'll talk to Mrs. Pettix. I'll make her aware of all the, you know, the appraisal, um, all the costs involved, and in that commission. And this is what we would recommend that we, to the town, that we could pay up to. Um, twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars for the property. That that's the maximum that the town could pay for this property because we have other costs involved, and, and that it's contingent upon um, consent from the town, after, uh, approval of the funding by the town. Right. Okay. okay. Any more discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any abstent, excuse me, any opposition? Any abstains? Nope. So moved. Thank you. All right. Um, well, we're still on open space opportunities. Just a quick note on the historic parcel on Jared Sparks Road. Um, Mark Palmer had sent me some more background um, when he did some searches on the property as well as the town's adjacent property. He wanted to know more about the parcel that uh, the town owns uh, next to that Jared Sparks, Sparks property, because originally uh, the person that owns the Jared Sparks property was saying that they felt that the town, the town's property was also part of the Jared Sparks property. And Mark has done extensive research and has found that's not true. It was it was part of other another parcel that was um, taken by the town um, in lieu of taxes. Yeah. So, and I have not heard from the landowner. I had called her a couple months ago, and she said that um, she was interested, but that she wanted to talk to her family, and I haven't heard back. Um, I'll probably mm -hmm. give her a call again in in October or November. Um, once the summer's kind of over and things are back to kind of normal swing for a lot of folks, so. All right, um, let's go back then. Let's, on old business, we'll go to A, support for farmland protection. Any updates from anyone? Nope, I've been working on other stuff. <laughs> okay, and Jackie's not here tonight, so we'll just table that. Collaborative organizational news and communication. Um, we had discussed that uh, Park and Rec would like to do a hike um, in co collaboration with our commission sometime this fall. There's nothing formal that's been discussed yet. I think we've talked about doing something off Mason Road. Um, would anybody on the commission be interested in working with Parks and Rec to come up with a date, um, maybe lead a hike on one of the Mason Road trails? Well, if anybody has an interest, <laughs> um, 
you know, we have some other projects coming up this fall. We're going to be having to work on the um, the bridge for the Boy Scout bridge. That's another weekend that we'll be working on something. Um, if there's nobody interested from the commission on leading the hike or getting more involved in this, I'm going to probably recommend that we um, cancel that till next year. So you can give it some thought if anybody's interested in doing it. It's not a lot of work, you know, contacting somebody from Park and Rec, um, James Calligan, and just coming up with a date. And then we can do a little bit of advertising. The commission can do that pretty easily. And uh, then somebody just showing up on that day to probably leave, you know, three to five people on a hike because we don't get lots of people. <laughs> yeah, I think that yeah, the, the turnout for, for Norris, Norris hike was somewhat disappointing. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's, uh, that it, it is, it's not a lot of work, but it, it is a commitment. And um, we don't have a good track red, record in terms of, a, of, a, of drawing a lot of people. Uh, so, so that kiosk on Burma Road, we don't post much on that, do we? And Mesa? Is it, um, on, on Burma, right at the Fenton Ruby parking lot. Oh, well, um, depends well, if we have something going on. Okay, because there's so many people in that park. You know what I mean? Walking. I just see so many people. So I'm always surprised that they're not at some of the events. And maybe I just haven't looked at the kiosk enough to see the changes posted. And people oh. just aren't aware of the properties on Mason Road in the same way. We, Mason, I don't know. We okay. still have. We put up a sign and say high mm -hmm. road properties and and you know how to get to them. But um, I don't yeah. know if that's had any effect either. Um, well, Nora's um, hike okay. event was posted at Baton Ruby. I put it up in the keynote. Okay. Okay. And it was so, well. Yeah. It was well advertised. It was on. The town's yeah. website, it was on the I library's heard. website, Facebook page. Um, it was posted in the library. It was posted. Uh, I knew that. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so but I was just thinking the kiosk. What, yeah. There are a plenty of people hiking there, but they're not know getting it. Stop to they're, not, they're not going four miles down the road to see our other properties, um, <laughs> basically what it amounts to, uh, because... They're, you know, because our park is so beautiful, why should they want to go elsewhere? But um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I I think it's not unfortunate yeah. because because there are, it's it's very different area, and there are some beautiful sections, as particularly the Hemlock area along the river. I oh, um, I know. Yeah, uh, Talmadge is is a, a, an incredibly nice, and we have people from out of town and Brand Brand Brandwick Ross and some friends that we know of who are involved with Joshua's Trust who say it's one of their favorite trails to, to come to come and walk that the town the trail on the Talmadge property and it is it's gorgeous uh but yeah. but it, it, it it's uh, it would be nice if we could somehow get people to say to try it someplace a little bit different and different perspective and um mm. and beautiful in its own right mm. Park and Rec, even on their website, has information about the Mason Road Trails as well. I mean, they're really good about posting that, and they've put it in the Wellington Wire, besides the information that we've put out about all of the town's trails on the Wellington Wire. I mean, I think in general, when you have an event, people are just very busy. Kids are involved yeah. in lots of things today, and there's a lot of choice, um, you know, mm. in the area, too, for hiking, so... Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Well, uh, Kathy, have we po posted the a map of the um at uh, of the trails, the Mason Road trails at the live on the library bulletin board? Maybe if people saw a map that might um, on the library um, bulletin board. I don't yeah. think so. Um, certainly we could do that. You know, at some of the other places. Um, you know, maybe at the but town. If there's a place at the town office building, I can't think. But I'm just trying to think where where there would be some ability because if people could actually see a trail map um then you know that might who knows we've got these got these beautiful trail maps we might as well use them <laughs> yes mm -hmm. nice to have somebody that can do that kind of thing for us jackie does a great job with that stuff yeah we're we're fortunate to have somebody has mm -hmm. that um ex experience and skill okay um let's see 
moving on, uh, Connecticut Forest and Park Association. I still have not heard back yet from Claire Kane about the uh, reroute on the Nipmuc Trail. Um, if, if you remember, they were asking if they could possibly come through like the Talmadge track uh, to access Mason Road um, and get out to Route 44, but I, I haven't heard from her to see what they've decided. Um, Connecticut Association of Conservation and Inland Wetland Commissions. Excuse me, before we leave uh, CFPA, when yep. is their, um, is it October that their conference is? Well, um, well, CFPA, I don't, you mean their walking weekends, uh, Cheryl? Yeah, uh, no, they're, they're, oh, no, I won't know, it's CLCC. Right. Well, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. So, yeah, Connecticut Forest and Parks, I don't think that they have an annual no, they don't have anything. But um, they do do the walking weekend. And that's, we've participated in that before where we advertise. Um, it's usually in October, no, excuse me, it's in, usually in June. They have their walking weekend. And we usually participate, we've participated in the past where we've been on their website, um, but not lately. Um, and when we have those big weekends, it's very difficult to attract people because there are so many things going on. Uh, that we tend not to get uh, large crowds anyway. Right. Uh, so maybe we're better off doing things um, on different dates from walk October or whatever those those right. special dates are. Yeah, October I think is uh, Last Green Valley. Yeah, Last um, Green Valley, but we've done that. that. Have the same issues with that too because of competition with other with other. There's so many places, nice places to, as you say, to do things to. The hike and canoe and kayak and whatever, um, yeah, and all and, in the, within the same time frame. It's and Joshua's to... track is you know holds weekend events and things too. They advertise that on their website and to their members. Um, Patty, you're part of another group that does a lot of hiking, so there is a lot going on. Um, it's uh, it's people if people want to hike, there's lots of options. Laura, did you want to say something? No, no, I'm good. <laughs> okay, I saw your name light up. Um, I'd like to. I'd like to ask a question. Yeah. How we? How how is the um, the dam holding against the Boy Scout Bridge nowadays? Because there was a point there where we were talking about getting a beaver specialist in. Mm -hmm. um, did that? Uh, that has that happened, or we're we're just waiting for a, a time to, to look at that at some other point. Um, I it's think stabilized. Probably, yeah. It's stabilized now. Yeah. Even with all the recent, I wondered about with all the recent rains and the torrential downpours we've been having, what, what effect that's had. Patty, uh, I haven't, any? I've been in Brooklyn for a week, so I don't know these last few storms, but it's definitely stabilized. There's, there isn't any rising. There isn't, I think. I don't think it's changed. Okay, that's well, good to we know. We have that little bypass yeah. around that one wet area. So, you know, as long as if that's holding up okay, I think we're, yeah. we don't have to worry about trying to trap fever or anything <laughs> at this point. If we could avoid that, it would be really nice because that would be extremely costly as well. Yeah. And probably not a long-term solution either because a new group of beavers would just move back in. <laughs> and honestly, exactly. so contrary to what Clark Ruby would want, <laughs> right? <laughs> Animal, right. wildlife, preserve. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, to, 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 yeah, it's, they're oh. part of the, they're part of the, uh, a part of nature and that's but what they do. So, yeah. Everybody's going yeah, to eat, good. you know? Looks good. <laughs> So, um, Connecticut Association of Conservation and, and Inland Wetland Commission's CACIWIC, their annual conference is going to be on Saturday, November 16th in Bristol. And um, if people are interested, you know, the commission can pay for your uh, entry fee. So if you're interested, just go on the CACIWIC website and uh, you can look at what's going on, what speakers. I mean, usually it's a great event. Um, so Maybe I that's what I was thinking. I remember you're sending something out. I've forgotten which organization it was. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, Kakiwick. And I can send out, they, I think they hadn't gotten their whole schedule together. It was kind of just an announcement, save the date. Um, but I do believe they're more cemented with what the uh, day will look like. And, but they usually have great speakers and a really nice tour. Yeah. So, and uh, so if you want to, if you're interested in doing something like that, huh. uh, it just fill out, uh, make a copy of your app, uh, registration form um, and get it to us. Then we could, we'll submit it for, for reimbursement. Like our, our copy. Where is it again being held? Bristol. Bristol. Crystal, sorry. Okay, Crystal. Yeah, I ran into somebody from that board on a trail in Manchester, the Hockenham Trails, and he was speaking very highly of it. <laughs> mm. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounded like a nice event. And then um, CROG, um, Capital Region Council of Government, has their draft plan of conservation of, and development uh, on their website. It's uh, 300 pages long. <laughs> wow. And they're looking for written or um, oral comments. Um, written comments are due by September 10th. Uh, public hearing is on September 19th, if you wanted to um, go to the, you know, or go online to the public hearing and make comments about it. Um, I did have a chance to go through some of it. I haven't finished yet. But I did find some um, issues with some of their mapping. They were mapping our open space as institutional um, areas rather than uh, open space areas. It looks like they may have had an issue with the color of the mapping. Um, they may have just identified those properties incorrectly. So um, I will be sure to, to put that in writing to them and make a note to um, our land use uh, office too, because I know that Mike D'Amato is, um, you know, involved with CROG. So, and I I know unless things have changed, there the open space map um, is not accurate and has it's not because the parcels that are shown on there um, uh, were sort of hand drawn before we had aerial mapping, and I don't think anything's been done to put um, to align the state. Um, park parcels in town with the actual parcels on the on the GIS par parcel map. So um, that makes it a little bit difficult. If you want to look at what you what we've got in Willington, it, it's the map is all weird. Hmm. The, the 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 records that that um, Deep had um, on our on our properties were absolutely unbelievably <laughs> inadequate and inaccurate um, because a lot of these transactions happened, you know, many years ago uh, before there was consistent mapping and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, then they're, they're missing um, information on various parcels because if you try and try and align our map with their map, you can't do it because the, uh, those, a lot of those parcels are just not uh, appropriately defined on the map, mm. unless that's changed, and I doubt it. Mm. So if anybody has time and, you know, you want to review um, some sections of CROG, you know, particularly about natural resource protection and, and uh, open space, I mean, I would encourage you just to give it a quick look. Um, it's a very interesting plan, lots and lots of beautiful pictures and uh, little sidebars and things. I mean, it's it's a, a relatively fast read because it's not all text, um, but it's um, something that we're a member of, the town of Willington's a member of. And so, you know, we certainly want to make sure that any information that is indicative of what we're up to is is, you know, correct. So... And I believe it also includes a lot of things that say they have urban areas that are within within the Krog region. There are a lot of things that sections in there that pertain to things like uh, public transportation and um, that kind of thing that don't really apply uh, to us. So, the, so when you talk about 300 pages, a lot of it will cover things that aren't really relevant to, to our town. Right, right. Because a lot of the towns that are in that um... Cog are more urban than suburban. So, okay, uh, properties management, Fenton Ruby, a couple quick things. 
um, Bob did go up to the Waigo Trail and took out a uh, cut cut up a, a very large tree that had crossed the trail. Um, Jackie did check on the cost for a black silage um, tarp that could possibly cover that Japanese silk grass that we found out by the old logging um, landing. And it would be $360 for a 100 by 50 feet black silage tarp, which is a lot of money. Um, um, can I think yeah. Could we take could we take that from the ARP of money? Uh that's a good question, Carol. I mean the ARP of money was more targeted okay. for building materials, but for trail maintenance, but I want but I are um I that's a possibility. I mean I could talk to um Christina Miles from the ARPA Commission and see if that would be something that could be I forget exactly how it was worded. Was it trail maintenance? It was building materials, I think. Uh, yeah. I'll, I looked at what yeah. the title of the what the title of that. Uh, I could actually could check with the finance office. We should be able to find out exactly what the wording was on that. Well, uh, I have it. I mean, if you need it, I can get that to you. But if you want to check with them and find out if that would be within those parameters, I mean, I don't know how specific. But we have we we haven't spent anything from the, thus far from the budget, so we could take that. From we have, and, and, hmm? we have spent some of the ARPA money. We spent some of the ARPA money, but we haven't spent any of our uh, oh, budget. Of our money for, uh, from the operate from our operating budget funds yet. Right. Um, and so, and we could we could charge other things related to trail maintenance. We could right. can be charged to ARPA, so we can handle yeah. it several different ways. I'd like to do is go out and measure that patch. And yeah, that was what I was going to say. Mm. You'd have to measure that patch, <laughs> and then you'd also have to see what's in the patch that can't be covered because it's a little tree growing. You know what I mean? How big is this patch? Well, that's what we we need to measure. But the the tarp itself is a hundred by fifty. Okay. So think yeah, of those so big black tarps that go over silages. You know, in farms. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. How would you secure that? Does this tarp have grommets in it that you'd be able to put like a, a, a umbrella shaped, you know, a hook, uh, tap something in? So I that don't know. It, I mean, you'd have to do something to keep the wind and the weather from, and little right. critters, little critters are going to go under there anyway. But I'm more just thinking about holding that tarp down through all the, all the seasons and it not just catching of the wind and 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 picking it up and you know making a mess and mm -hmm. I mean because it's a big piece it's a big piece of tarp yeah. and the wind can you know get a hold of it definitely and you know I think farmers traditionally kind of use old tires you know if you that's think. right <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think we want to get that many tires up there. <laughs> no, we don't have any old tires around here or if they did I donate it but yeah that's going to be that's going to be um, quite the quite to, to, to hold that thing down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you can buy little hooks, like even at Mansfield Supply, and yeah. you tap them into the ground. And they're not very expensive. And that right. way, we wouldn't have to continually wonder, yeah. you know, when there's a storm, do we have to go out there and check to make sure the tarp is still down? Let me check with Jackie. I think she has experience with them, and she can tell us if there are the, uh, you know, the little grommets on them that we could use that. That's a great um, question, Marilyn. Yeah, we want that thing to lie on the ground as much as possible. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know how long it would last or how long we'd have to keep it down, um, but it could potentially be used somewhere else in the future, or maybe we could resell it to a farmer or whatever. Yeah. We 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 buy tarps to cover up our wood that we get developed. Uh, we get like six cords delivered, and it, it holds up. If if it's a good we wo woven to tarp, it'll hold up to the weather. Mm -hmm. But you have to um you have to look at what you're buying to make sure that it's not. Some of those are really cheap, and the weaving on them is really poorly done, and it, it doesn't take much for them to. You know, for a little chipmunk to go underneath there and start gnawing at it. You know what I mean? 
all those little critters <laughs> new home to move into but it's just we have to remember that that's a big tarp and the wind could take it so we want to make sure we secure it properly yep yep great points all right let's um we'll talk to jackie and um get more information right and in the meanwhile, um, I'll try to get out there and measure the area at least to make sure that would be adequate to cover what, what we're noticing. Um, uh, another um, issue I wanted to bring up, Patty had um, asked me a question about the meadow that's along the Taylor Pond Trail that's at the back end of the Taylor Pond, you know, the one that's all growing back in, not the yeah. one that's cleared, but whether or not uh, public works could possibly help us to reestablish that by going in there with either some equipment to cut down the small trees that are growing back in there. Um, I haven't talked to public works. I know that they're so busy. Um, they have a staff of four. Um, I didn't realize that when Troy told me that I was really surprised. And that includes everybody that works at the transfer station too. So, um, mm. There. And that's there's usually two or three, up to two people, sometimes three at the dump. Yeah, so they're working weekends, and and you know, if we have a bad storm, whatever, people are out, you know, late at night, um, checking on culverts and so on and so forth. So, um, and I, the hard part is trying to get a piece of equipment out there across the bridge. Um, yeah, you know, they do have the the mower that they used along the edges of the back fields on Fenton Ruby Park to cut down all the invasives around the edges. And they're gonna continue to do that um, every you know few years is to go in there in the late fall and, and early winter and cut all that brush along the edge out. But we can't get that machine across the bridge. So it would have to be something smaller like um, a DR trimmer. I think that we remember we had looked into buying one of those yeah. And I'm still not, I'm not quite convinced even that right now would be enough to cut down what's growing back there because a lot of it is saplings. Mm. We, we might have to go in with a chainsaw and cut a lot of that stuff. Um, and that. So I, yeah. sorry. No, go ahead, Patty, because you had raised it. I'm sorry, I'm talking about it. Go ahead. So I had talked to three different towns, either the public works director or the parks and rec department. Mm -hmm. um, whoever managed the open space and trails in their parks. Mm -hmm. And they were great, all three of the people I talked to. Sorry, can you hear me with the background noise? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so the thing like the consensus is all the towns, um, they get to the call directly, not through a commission like we do necessarily when there's a tree down or when there's a problem with a trail. All three of the towns get it their employees get it they kind of queue it up and decide when to address it but that's what they do mm -hmm. um and they also um were saying two of the towns never would um ordain volunteers using chainsaws on their property it's too huge a liability yeah mm -hmm. they they would never do it um they did say if they were ever considering it, that they would absolutely um, do chainsaw training with them and provide them with the equipment or else reimburse them for the equipment. But that's a real no-no, my sense from all three towns. Mm -hmm. um, two of the towns do seasonal hiring over the summer. Like one did five, another one did 10, specifically for like the trail maintenance. Uh, a lot of mowing, of course, because these are our surrounding towns. So they have a ton of open space, but they have the staffing for it to do it. But I don't see why we can't change that a little bit and start asking more of the town to help. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought it was really interesting talking to all three of them. They were a great help mm -hmm. um, and they do oversee it. Um, Vernon has the Greenways group which is very involved and they've got like a hundred volunteers and that's the only volunteer group that I heard on all three of the towns. So the towns do a lot more than they do in Wellington. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry, we don't have enough people, but 
I mean, it seems like it might need to be addressed. Like we've said in the past, we're all getting older. Mm -hmm. Sure. What towns were they, Patty? Vernon? Vernon, Mansfield, and Tolland. Okay. Well, thank you for doing all that research. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was good to hear. I mean, it's interesting. Um, some of them completely understand the predicament <laughs> of maintaining all this property. But yeah, they hire summer help, two of them, a, a fair amount. Mm -hmm. the need is bigger. much larger towns and much more affluent than we are. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, no, nope, no, nope, not, not, not debating that, but, but the whole um, relying so much on with liability issues. Yeah, and that's the volunteers. a very good point. And they also said they get the calls across the board. Like I know, Kathy, it seems like you get a fair amount of calls. Maybe, I don't know. That's yeah, the town this, should be receiving the calls. I don't know. I, I don't know. It was interesting. It's because right now the public works does not have designated responsibility for the town open space or the trails. I mean, it would have to be something that would be changed. The Park and Rec's department and or public works would have to become involved, you know, would have to be designated. Exactly. And that's what I feel like going forward, we should start discussing and maybe making mm -hmm. that transition to some degree. Because mm -hmm. we do so much great work, like the field we cleared, what, two years ago, we lost it, you know? I mean, the one behind Michael Bolstridge's bench on Taylor Pond, I don't mm -hmm. think that's recoverable. Well, not without a lot of work, right? Yeah. And we don't want to lose the other one, you know, where you and Chris, Kathy, cleared out that big, beautiful pine tree and you got all the vines off of it. Yeah. yeah. That, that field's really growing in again. Mm -hmm. so. Well, now the town of Tolland, I'm, you know, you, you're telling me, I, I must say this, because I know that they have their own uh, volunteer corps, um, that does their trail maintenance. I don't think it's their public works department because I've spoken. No, to right, right. Yeah. But they get the call and they go in and do the trees, specifically talent. Like none of the, um, they don't want to know much about anybody using chainsaws. But you're right, there are volunteers. Yeah. For sure. But um, from talent, it was more the liability issue and hiring seasonal staff to help. I mean, they all have their different nuances, of course. Yeah. But but I felt like that was the takeaway, but what I just said, yeah. Yeah, so, no, I think that's, I, I don't know. It's, a, it's an excellent point because I, I agree with you. I think we have to start to bring this up because it's gonna take a while before anything would change anyway, um, but start to bring this up maybe in conversation with the Board of Selectmen and having them consider how they want to address it with park and rec and public works over time, because the conservation commission can't continue to be the hands-on resource for taking care of all the trails. Um, it's just not a viable option for the future. We just seen, we don't have the same number of people on the commission that can do yeah. the work, but also we don't have the same number of volunteers that turn out to do the work either. And uh, the other thing yeah, I think- it's a, it's a good discussion to start. Yeah. yeah. They perhaps raising the issue of hiring, uh, of seasonal hiring um, would be something that, that would be less expensive um, and it would be um, treated differently than, than having you know a, somebody on the payroll all the time. Um, and- uh, Yeah. Uh, one town hired five and one hired nine, and they said usually it's college students who are really interested in it, and they have the same college students and coming back, and then when they do come back, they get a dollar more an hour, so they're pretty creative in trying to get those um, same seasonal workers, the college students, and they've been successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joshua's trust. Um, gets a lot of that from the um, College of Ag. That they get volunteers, a lot of They get volunteers and then they get the, 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 the people that are volunteering get to put that on their resume. Mm -hmm. So it's um it's a good it's a good system, but you have to have a place where there 
you there's a pool of people that you can just grab and bring in and be, because it's seems to be something that um that uh, the department of um animal science and the just the, in general the, the um that part of the, the agricultural community enjoys you know get, getting these kids involved because they're the future they're the future right. and they, they need to um get out there and see what's going on in land trust and just or even the parks at our place it's another way um to get them involved to see all the different ways that if they do want to have this be their life work they understand that there's there's a lot of places you can go to to get to get to get started to understand how it works one of the issues with volunteers is you usually need a volunteer coordinator and that, you know, the land trusts do have volunteer coordinators. We, you know, don't do that. We had looked for a steward, a, um, a main steward, if you will, to be a um, the person, the go-to person for all of our trail stewards. And nobody, nobody offered to do that. We did um, advertise that in the Wellington Wire. We've posted it at the Mason Road trails and the Front and Ruby Park trails. And, yeah. um, you know, even just getting trail stewards to do one trail, um, you know, we've had some people stay um, working on the trails and some would do it for a year and then, you know, that's, no they, that's it. Yeah. But you do need somebody to coordinate that. And that's another issue. You know, should that be Park and Recs or Public Works who have paid staff? rather than a commission that, you know, we're trying to volunteer to do what we can as it is, never mind, right. you know, coordinating a bunch of volunteers. And I think we've proven we haven't been successful with volunteers. So yeah, public works kind of needs to hear this in parks and rec. I, I don't know. Yeah. It, yeah. We have a to manage the park, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to do everything to, um, maintain it um, with, right. with commission members. That management does not necessarily involve going out and repairing the, the, the bridges and, <laughs> and taking care of the yes. events and all of that. It's, yep. uh, yeah, it's super, it more su should be more supervisory and less hands-on. And we've had um, enormous success over the years with people doing it, but uh, you know, some of that goes back for, for me at least you know, 25, 30 years, and I'm certainly not able to do things that I used to be able to do. Um, so, yeah, and if, as we've expanded, you know, and created trails on Mason Road, I mean, we're required to put in trails when we receive money from uh, deep for open space, they require that they be open to public use with a trail. So we've been requiring, you know, extra resources to take care of that as well as the park. So, yeah, that's, yeah. it's a good, uh, I'll, you know, for this fall, um, when I'm back from um, traveling, I certainly can have um, a meeting with the board, with at least the first selectman and see where he wants to take it, um, if it should go to the full board and so on, so. Yeah, that's happening. Okay, anything else on that issue? Uh, Kathy, is there anything particular about Knowlton and Talmadge? Or, um, um, I just wanted to say on Fenton Ruby, the other thing is um, Austin Harmon from Hull and Jackie are going to get together sometime in the late fall to, to take a walk on stand eight and seven. You know, the areas that we talked about in our forest management plan that were areas that maybe um, some small uh, timber management or timber harvesting was suggested, and they're going to go out and look and see what they
I see Carol. Yeah. Something, something froze that I was having. Yeah, yeah. It was everything was frozen for me too. I was like, <laughs> should I leave? And, you know, and then and then you came back. So I'm here. I don't know. <laughs> Anybody else there? Uh, I'm here. <laughs> you just can't see me. I look like a domino. <laughs> Coming. you're missing patty still i'm still i suddenly lost all of your i can hear you but i can't see you. <laughs> uh, i'll be but i'll like to start i'll start video yeah let me just see i'm there i can see myself i can see kathy that's yep. okay my, my, my phone decided i was in driving mode when i started it and that's why i don't let me <laughs> <laughs> we're all here i just hey, modern technology wonderful <laughs> here we go there we go okay so um under town development i uh, just wanted to mention again that the economic development commission is holding their open house on saturday september 7th at the library from one to four i'm hoping that some of you will have an opportunity to attend. Um, I would love to go. I just, I have um, relatives coming to visit. And so I can't be there that What's day. The dates? What's the, the date, Kathy? It's September 7th. It's a Saturday. Same day as the annual flea market. Flea market. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, and it's from one to four at the library. It's an open house. I'm going to send out a flyer that I received from Ernie Blindberger, who is the consultant working with EDC, and I'll send that out to all the commission members. Um, but there's going to be a lot of discussion topics. They're going to have roundtables, and they're still looking for facilitators. If, if you know of anybody who might be interested in helping out, you don't have to be knowledgeable about the particular subject of your table, just somebody who, you know, can read a little script and then take a lot of notes pe with people having ideas, just kind of scribe. Um, they're still looking for some facilitators. So, and let's see, regional pollinator pathway initiatives. There's nothing new that I'm aware of. Um, we already covered open space opportunities number or a letter G, Wellington Wire. Next article is due at the end of September. Marilyn, are you st uh, still? It's, a, it's, I already sent them my article. For September? Sure. Yeah, they, they, they gave us a, he, he gave a heads up a couple weeks ago. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, a reminder. Okay, great. Yeah. Would you mind just for my records, because I keep a copy of all of them, um, right. files, if you could send me a copy, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. What was it about? What was that one about? Um, winterizing a garden, I believe, is this this was the last one. Oh, nice. All right. Good it's, subject um, for the fall. It's, it's, um, I, I'm going I'm to uh, send kudos to Dave. Dave always comes up. He says, well, why don't you do this? And it's like, I never thought of that. <laughs> it's hard coming up with a topic. You know yeah, what I that's mean? That's a great idea, though. And, and, and it's hard to get places to, to, to get information sometimes. But um, so far, knock on wood, I, I've had good luck. Hmm. That's excellent. That's great. Yeah. Well, tell Dave to keep the brainstorming coming. <laughs> <laughs> Never hurts to have another brain on the job. Yep. <laughs> All right. And under communications, I have nothing to report. Um, and review of current open space and natural resource maps. I think we decided we're going to table that until the fall. But I just want to keep it on the agenda. So if people have time and you want to start to look at some of the materials that I had sent, um, you know, you'll have some adequate time to do that. Any other information or items that people like to add to the agenda tonight? Nope. I moved to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> do I hear a second? I I'll second. second. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. aye. <laughs> okay, we're adjourned at 822. Thanks. Thank you, everybody.
Thank Bye, you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Have a good month. Yeah, you too.